where we have uh, Hon Ching and JJ with us. Uh, so those of you who do not know, um, they have won the first Apple Design Awards for Singapore, as well as for the whole of Southeast Asia. This is the first time ever um, we have uh, Apple Design Awards. Uh, now, those of you who haven't heard about Apple Design Awards, I'm not sure uh, if there will be anyone among you. So this is basically, um, how do I say, this is an award of highest level for app uh, developers and designers, especially people who are working on Apple platform. Um, I was actually lucky to be with Han Cheng this year uh, when he um, got the award. Um, and this was my second time with him at WWDC. I went uh, to WWDC at, uh, in 2015. Um, but I could see all the excitement that he had when he got uh, the award. Uh, we had a, a Facebook chat group where a bunch of us uh, from Singapore, um, from Singapore Power and even from uh, Carousel, there are a bunch of engineers who, who traveled together. We had a Facebook chat uh, and he kind of announced there that, hey, I got the Apple Design Award. We were like, wow. <laughs> um, then we were also very excited. And um, so this session um, is going to be um, about their story, how they build apps, um, about their particular app, Elk, uh, that got them the Apple Design Award. Um, so this is going to be the agenda for today. Um, I have a few questions I get to ask first because I arranged this session. <laughs> um, so I have a few questions that I'm going to ask. Um, again, this is just to kickstart the series of questions that you guys might have. Um, now, if you can look into the bottom part of the slide, there's a uh, URL, slido.com. You can uh, visit that uh, URL on your browser if you want. And put iOS Dev Scout um, as the hash key, and you can um, ask your questions. And if you think there is a better question somebody else has asked and you probably have the same question, then you can kind of like it and we'll pick the uh, top questions and we'll, we'll go through those as well. Um, yeah, so that's about slider.com. Uh, <laughs> so this was a photo I think they, they took uh, after they gave uh, the cube. Where is the cube? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see that later. Um, um, and a bunch of us who were there, we, we took this opportunity to take a photo with him. He was like, uh, uh, because this time they did not have, like every year they have a special uh, event uh, on the first day um, where they announce uh, the winners uh, of Apple Design Awards. Uh, but this year they tried different thing. They, they had a press and um, so we kind of got to know uh, from the badges, uh, from anyone who is holding the cube. Um, so the moment we see somebody holding the cube is basically he's a celebrity there at WWDC. So Han Ching was one of them. But before I can start the questions, I would like uh, Han Ching and JJ to kind of quickly introduce themselves, um, what they currently do, um, and maybe a few things about themselves. Um. So I've been uh, doing iOS work since uh, the first version of iOS. That was the Apple OS. Um, um, one of my first company was uh, Nextbus and uh, Book. And then uh, we started Clean Shaven Apps about five years ago. Yeah, can you hear me? Um, yep. Ah, this all? Okay. Uh, hi everybody, uh, thanks to Soup for having us here. Um, I'm a late starter, unlike him, he, he started even before the App Store was out. Um, I only started around iOS 4, uh, that would be 2010. So that's also the year we met. And then um, after that, we just happened to... Uh, we started playing badminton and then having bubble tea and don't know why we started uh, a company and uh, that's where we are today. <laughs> okay. Those of you who do not know me, my name is Sub. I'll just end it here. <laughs> so let's talk about Elk. Um, what is Elk? Me? Okay. Um, I think it, it all started... Um, during one of my trip to Hong Kong last year, I think, yeah. 
um, basically I was buying a weighing machine for my coffee. But at, at the same time, I decided to buy coffee as well. So I just ordered this filter black coffee. And they say it's um, 78 Hong Kong dollar. My weighing scale I knew was very cheap because uh, I searched online. It was all like uh, $40, $50. But I remember that was that place was that selling weighing ma ma machine for like about 20 bucks. So it was 98 Hong Kong dollar. So when I paid for the coffee at 78 Hong Kong dollar, I was I started thinking this is not right. How come the coffee how come the coffee's coffee is about the same price as the weighing machine? So after I calculated, oh my god, it's about 14 Sing dollar for a cup of black coffee. And I was just really shocked. But at the same time, there wasn't any good um way for me to quickly convert um currencies on the go. I mean I, I had my Apple Watch then, I had a iPhone, but it was just uh, too much trouble to take it out and do conversion. And besides, you know, very pricey to like they say, hey, you want $78 uh, coffee? I take out my iPhone and start calculating. So when I came back, I started mocking up this uh, idea to... Uh, the initial idea was on the watch because when you raise your wrist, right, you always have the app with you. So we would use the crown to start converting money. Uh, and yeah, later on we added um, the iPhone app. Uh, and yeah, so it's a currency converter that works uh, very quickly, uh, discreetly. Uh, yeah. Anything on that? Um, so those of you who do not know, um, they own the Apple Design Award for the WatchOS um, app. I was initially thinking that uh, is for the um, iOS app or the iPhone app, which is actually pretty cool as well, other the animations and the user experience. Um, but they own it for uh, the WatchOS app. And JJ has a very nice blog about how they went um, about uh, designing this whole app uh, where many people um, start building an iPhone app and build uh, a companion app or watch um, and they later kill it because usually the this particular companion app doesn't add any value whereas they did the other way around they, they built the watch app first and then they started building the iOS app as the uh, companion app so um, this is a question for you, Hong Cheng, um, because you have been avoiding the mic. Um, how did it feel to win the first uh, Apple Design Awards for the whole of Southeast Asia, especially when JJ was not there with you? Uh, so uh, it's definitely great to get your work recognized by a company that is uh, famous for design. Um, yeah, so... Going to WWDC, we were hoping that we'll win the ADA. I mean, every year I go, I, I hope that I win it. So this year I was particularly hopeful. I was telling him that uh, um, if we win the ADA, I'll FaceTime him uh, while I go up to the stage to get the award. <laughs> but that didn't happen. So looking at the schedule, oh, there was no ADA this year. So, uh, at the, so like, oh, maybe it, there's no ADA. Uh, there's no award for for Apple not giving award this year, so um, so it was definitely a surprise Monday evening when they told us about it, and yeah, we were supposed to keep quiet for another two days until uh, the press comes and then they they make the big announcement. Yeah. JJ, how did you feel when uh, you heard about you uh, heard about the um, award and uh, as uh, because like you were not there. Yeah, actually, I I was uh, I opened slap. I slept in because I was watching the keynote, and then he was trying to call me. So it was a bit anticlimactic for me, lah. Cause I just woke woke up, and then it was like, "Hey, we won!" It was like, "Really? Oh, okay, yeah." Then, and then uh, took took me a while to let it set set in, lah. But yeah, I guess uh, it's it's, I mean, we've been doing quite a number of apps but um this is this is really the first time that uh, apple has recognized it so i think we are both very excited about it thank you 
So uh, this is an interesting question. Um, and we, we spend a lot of time thinking about these questions, uh, like all of us uh, organizers. Um, what is the story of your collaboration when you build apps? Uh, and what are the, some of the previous apps that you have built? Um, especially, uh, can you tell about some of the apps that you worked on but never released? So I talk about the collaboration part. So we we first met, like Gigi said, we first met in 2015. Uh, we were both giving a talk at uh, Apple Office, uh, I think iOS 4. So there were three speakers. He was I was the first speaker. He was the third speaker. So that was the day we met. And after that, we hang out uh, and then and uh, got to know. You know, I got to know his app better. You know, I. Uh, um, We decided to start a company together. Um, so the first app. Actually, the first app was the one that never got released, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we were going to do a location reminder app. Um, we, we were looking for the screenshots today and. We forgot why we didn't release it, but we didn't release it. So the first public app was a app called Dispatch, uh, basically the T-shirt I'm we wearing now. Um, it started in Japan. We went on a trip, um, and then um, being an independent developer, my my own app has um, I need to handle support email. So back on the Mac, what I will do is I will use a text text expander so it's something like you can store uh, commonly used uh, responses so I just type something and then you know, just expand out so I can handle support email quite quickly like that but on the iPhone uh, it was pretty difficult so I started um, I brought up the idea hey, how about we make an email app on the iPhone Yeah, but it was a bit unrealistic, I think, because, you know, it's a two-man team and we don't know anything about, you know, those, all those email protocol, uh, pop, uh, IMAP, whatnot, and, but somehow, I don't know, we managed to find some uh, open source library and we really started working on an email app, two of us, I think it was a bit crazy idea because we really spent one whole year um, making our first app so I think 
uh, I I think it w- most people would consider it a bad decision. Like I mean, you devote so much time and energy into making an app that you don't even know whether it will work out uh, financially. But I think that's what we did. So, but mainly because it was just to scratch my personal itch. Like, I wanted to, I wanted something to reply emails quickly on the go. So. Yeah, that was our first app, Dispatch. And um, next. Oh. Anything else you want to add? Your collaboration? Hmm? How you collaborate? Um, how do we work? So we are both uh, developers and designers. Uh, but JJ works more on the design and user interaction. I... I like to play with uh, animation and transition and um, we don't really divide how we work it's just uh, whoever have time they just just work on it Uh, we kind of know our strength and weaknesses very well so certain things I know I should be working on it certain things he know he will work on it Um, certain divisions I know okay when it comes to UX if we have certain conflict, you know, I'll, I'll trust him. We we'll go with his decision. Yeah. yeah, that's how we work. Now this is going to be hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit over here? Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, so at this point, I'm going to look through some of the questions that uh, the uh, the participants have asked, and I'm going to pick one of the questions. So make sure you keep liking the uh, questions that you think is interesting. Um, okay. Did Apple secretly tell you before you went to WWDC that you were the ADA winner so that they could make sure you were there to collect it? Uh, no. Uh, we were told that uh, they are do- doing a, a website for developer profiling so they wanted some images from us uh, profile of of our company and description of the apps we make and that's all we were told and um, yeah I don't know what will happen if we don't go but they (laughs) they they already know that I'm attending so yeah but I they are other ADA winners that were not attending at WWDC, but they have a a special visitor pass to come in for a few hours, but not to attend sessions. I guess that's what they do. But if for them in US it's easy, for for Singapore it's hard. Yeah, we can't just fly them. I think um, we we did we did secretly guess whether because they keep asking us for a lot of things. It was very irritating, like. Can you send us photos? Uh, then we have to. I have to get my wife to take photo. Get his wife to come and take photo of us working together. Uh, I mean, a lot of things like write ups and all. And so at one point, I was just. Uh, I asked uh, the local Apple e- evangelist. Is this is still? Oh uh, yeah. Asked him. Uh, is the ADA decided yet? I mean, is this like related to the ADA? He told me. Oh no, it's not. So <laughs> we. <laughs> We just uh, assume it's not uh, but and especially because we saw the schedule, there's no ADA. So uh, we thought we thought that we initially we guessed it might be, but later on we thought it is not, and then yeah, things happen. I'm going to ask one more question from um, the list of uh, questions on Slido, and then we are going to go through the questions that I have on Slide. Um, so this is a question for you, Hon Cheng. Uh, are you still involved with SG Next Plus? And uh, if yes, uh, what would you do uh, differently if you have to redo the app or rethink about it? Um, yes, I am still involved. I am redoing the app now. <laughs> um, uh, what would I do differently? Uh, a lot of feedback is about using so so the app is about bookmarking your frequently used buses so 
the idea is you launch the app, you see the arrival time and you close the app within seconds. You don't need to navigate much within the app. But one feedback is that for users who are in a place they're not familiar with, uh, when they launch the app, they use nearby. And the nearby buses may not be from the nearest bus stop. So the next update, I will try to tackle that that problem. If So the part where you take the same bus every day, uh, that's what I was I was trying to solve in the previous version of the app. So now I'm going to try to solve problem with uh, when you are uh, figure out your nearby stops. Also, the navigation is it's quite fancy, but it's it's not very user friendly. So I'll try to fix the navigation as well. So this is a little bit about uh, both of you again. Um, what is normally your app making process uh, and what uh, really goes into uh, the ideation process when you have an idea, uh, like how do you conceptualize it and what actually goes into the ideation process? Who do you go to and how you basically collect feedbacks? So do you even care those details or you just build the apps and see where it goes? Um, JJ, you first. I think uh, we, Honchen and I talked talk about this earlier today. I, I think we broke it down to two kinds of ways we get ideas. Uh, the first one is where it's basically we, we, we are upset about something that we can't do on our phone. So we decide to do something about it. So scratching a person at each. The other one is where we, we try to think of uh, ideas based on technologies that Apple introduced. Like, I mean, for this year, you'll be AR kit, right? Um, so, uh, so largely our apps are like, they are born either because we need the app or because we're trying to adopt some new technology that Apple has introduced. So while we were looking through the apps, that we have made so far and how well or how badly they have done. Uh, it seems like those apps that um, that we make because we need them, they, they, they still continue to fare quite well. And those apps that we make because we think like, you know, we are adopting this technology and uh, maybe Apple will be excited to feature us. Uh, those apps that are made that way, they, they don't seem to fare that well. And uh, yeah, so I think even for us personally, I mean, Hongqing makes next bus and buses. I make uh, my reminders app due. So those are apps that we use uh, every day. We have this vested interest to keep um, making it work well. Um, and and whereas if we're just adopting a technology to make an app, I guess when the tech, when the novelty wears off, uh, it becomes a chore to keep it going. Whereas for him, I mean, he's excited thinking about his uh, bus app, like how to make it better. I'm always excited thinking about how to make my own apps better as well. So uh, yeah, I guess two ways to get ideas, but I think thinking back, we we should really make apps that we need, we want to use, rather than uh, because Apple introduced this technology. Um, actually, even for apps that use, we make because uh, Apple introduced the technology, it's, it's kind of apps that we need. It's just maybe the, like clips, you wanted a clipboard manager to, all right. Uh, it's just maybe um, the use use case is not that strong. That after some time, our interest just drop, right? Feedback. You want to show me? Yes. Uh, let me. Yeah, so um, we made about five five apps. So clips, timers, uh, 
Alive, Pico. Those are the four apps that we made because uh, Apple introduced a new technology in the new SDK. So Clips, it was uh, today extension and custom keyboard. Uh, uh, Alive was because the li live photo API. And Pico was because the iMessage apps. And then Timers, Timers because of uh, WatchOS. Timers is actually our first uh, WatchOS app. Um, it is actually doing quite well. Uh, it's just that uh, over the over the years, we kind of lost the interest to use the app, and it's not that. Um, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, uh, how well an app does, I think depends a lot on, on uh, whether we are we're interested to keep maintaining the app and improving the app. So if you don't do something that you, you have a lot of interest in, it's very difficult to, to make a good app. Yeah. So JJ is trying to showcase something on the Apple TV. Um, you all know the passcode. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't know my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> so I think one part of the question was about um, who do you go for feedback, right? <laughs> I, I think... Um, most of the time, until the app is like almost um, almost ready, it's kind of quite close between us. So so far, we haven't had had an app made because um, we ask someone for feedback. Hey, how, what kind of app do you need? But it's always like, yeah, I need this thing. He needs this thing. So the the ideas are usually quite internal, and ideas are also fragile. Um, in that, you know, before it's fully developed, when you share with someone, uh, if if you're not too sure, uh, someone may may question, may bring up too many questions, and you start okay, maybe this idea doesn't work, so you end up abandoning the idea. So, I guess for us, most of the time, um, we by the time someone other than both of us has seen the app is really uh, is already working the, the the design is already somewhat out but of course we go through stages of user testing and uh, very major changes could happen so this is just well, one one of the testing that we have done this is for uh, dispatch the email app right so uh, we took one whole year to do it but this is a I don't know when was this, like how many months down development, but this is the first usability test that we we, we did. Uh, Hongqing is also very interested in like wacky UI stuff, so he he likes to write these controllers that help you uh, do fanciful navigation. So this is one of the examples. So initially both of us thought it was a really great idea. Wow, with these sliding panels all going around switching accounts so during the testing itself uh, we realized how bad an idea it was so just to give you an idea uh, this is basically one of our friend um, what we do is just we come up with a list of tasks uh, can you uh, create a new snippet can you uh, try to reply to this email can you archive this email and see how he responds to it so we just record it down and we ask him to verbalize his thoughts so you hear a bit of what he's uh, talking about. Because the next time we come here, so I'm getting a little bit of 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 a little bit of
So, um, I, could, I can use this, right? Uh, I think we need to say <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, what, what, what actually is supposed to happen is uh, it's supposed to be like this when you have multiple accounts. So this this one never seen the light of the day, <laughs> and and it's like I guess it's important because when we work, uh, we're so deep into the project we can't see where the pitfalls. So it's it's great that we have people who um, have never seen the app before. So when we show it to them for the first time, um, you know, we really see it from a new user's pers perspective. Yeah. yeah, the rest not so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try this mic once more time. Hello, Michelle, if you can do it. Hello. Oh, I'm Yeah, for the app, we actually uh, had to scrap two different navigation. That was the first one. And then we made a completely new navigation and we tested on a, uh, on a different friend. And then we have to throw everything again. And uh, the final one, we just went with something more conventional. <laughs> Okay, this is going a little bit um, off the screen. I'll just read it out. Hello. So, uh, uh, some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, some apps uh, don't do well initially, and uh, this is uh, kind of true for a lot of uh, indie developers. Uh, if you are doing it um, full time, and it's even harder, right? You need some kind of encouragement um, to keep going. But this is not really about the financial part. I'll, I'll come to that later. But you still need to continuously put effort to update your apps uh, when a newer or um, new iOS comes up, and when you have new APIs, you need to make sure nothing breaks nothing crashes um, at what point of time you decide okay uh, we are not going to support this app anymore um, I'm done with this one I'm going to pull the plug okay uh, we are very bad this uh, we have not put down any of our apps yet <laughs> uh, but we know there are some apps that we should from time to time we we talk about it we can't spend the effort on this app, not on that app. We, maybe we want to make a new app, or should we look back at an existing app? Should we be doing more for it? And we, so far, we 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 just we we are very bad at it. Um, um, so, do you have any comment? <laughs> no comments. <laughs> Yeah, we we do have an, some some really old apps at the moment that uh, like Clips, which is still iOS eight. If you look at it, it the today extension doesn't look f right in iOS ten. Yeah, and 
uh, a lot of the decision on whether we want to continue to support the app is also depends on whether the app is doing well in the app store and deserve like us to put more attention to it. Yeah, kind of a similar question on that line. Um, so this one is from the participants. How did you both sustain yourselves financially, especially when you were doing your first app? Um, did you have a, a job that uh, were, uh, that was giving you a salary that uh, was enough for you? Um, but it's, it's a question for both of you, so not just for one. So, uh, Actually, app, um, app development, uh, I mean, I, I'm an accidental app developer. Um, when before I one year before I graduated, I started a photography school with a friend. So that was my first job. I mean, yeah, my first business. And <clears throat> when the business uh, took off, I mean, it's not like very very well, but sustainable. Uh, I had some free time, so I said, uh, I mean, I always like making things, so. Uh, I decided to take uh, three months off to explore iOS programming and um, I learned best by making things so I decided to embark on a project so that project happened to be due uh, the, the, the first app that I made and still 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 going on in the app store now so um, definitely with, without that uh, income from the first business uh, without the time that is afforded to me I, I don't think I I would have been able to sustain uh, because initially it was really just a hobby it was uh, I didn't even imagine that one day uh, I would be making a career out of it so um, it's good to not quit your job first and you know work on it at the side uh, I mean, you can always you will know you know when the time comes uh, uh, that you you know that it's sustainable enough. Uh, you can then you can explore going full time into it. I think, but but um, there are a lot of spikes in the app store. So maybe one day you get featured by someone, and then you know you make a lot of money in one day. Like uh, maybe your friends need a few months to make amount of money, but. I think uh, these spikes will go away very quickly. So, um, yeah, you you really have to uh, be very sure that you have a sustainable income from your apps before you uh, decide to jump into it full time. I think. Um, I was uh, with Book uh, right when we started. So. So I started book with John and Mohan when I was doing my studies. Uh, that was when I, uh, I made my first bus app. And through that, uh, they, I, I got to know John and Mohan and we started the company called Book. Uh, so that's kind of the business that uh, sustained me uh, while I, I work on this. Uh, we you we usually meet once a week on a Thursday to like to work on our apps and and discuss and try to realign our focus. Yeah. So I'm again going to read a questions from the participants. Uh, what advice you would give to um, beginner iOS developers? which are the areas they really need to focus on and be strong at when they are um, beginning iOS development and uh, what kind of distractions they should ignore. What kind of distractions they should ignore, if at all there is any. Any time to think. <laughs> um, I think from what we learn, always start with a project that you are uh, very interested to solve. That's a big motivation to to learn something new. And when you learn something new, there's always an initial hurdle you have to cross, and it's always it always feel very difficult initially. Once you cross that, uh, everything's just 
flow smoothly. But to, to, to get to that stage, you need a big, good enough motivation, and that, that's a good project to start with. Um, and for distraction, I think, I think a lot of uh, developers get distracted with uh, technical details. Uh, it's not that it's bad, I think it's good. Uh, but there needs to be priority. If your, your interest is you want to make a business that is sustainable, you need to release your app. So if you get distracted by you know, uh, technical, difficult, technical details to the point that you're not releasing your app, I, that's, that's bad. Um, Yeah, I think related to that point, um, there's a saying that goes, uh, perfect is the enemy of good, right? So uh, a lot of times we, if, if you try to get too caught up in uh, shipping the best possible thing, then your product may never ship. So I guess it's, it's about, um, I mean, if you're starting out your first project, I think go for something like really minimally viable. Uh, when I started on my first app deal, it was totally, I mean, the first version was totally nothing like what it was, what it is today. So, but it did solve a problem that, that I wanted to solve. So uh, just having that singular focus on um, solving that problem. So although it, it couldn't do a lot of things, but I guess enough people have the same problem and and they they find the app useful enough. Eventually, if if it kicks off, you can you have more time to add add on to it. But if if you spend like us one whole year working on a project, and you realize that nobody has the same problem as you, uh, I mean, there's there's one year of time that you have thrown down the drain. Um, so I guess um, start small. I mean, give yourself a few months. Uh, launch something, see how it works out, and it, if it's uh, the response is good, encouraging, then you can decide later on to uh, work further on it. Yeah. So the next question is: uh, Is there any new feature in iOS 11 that uh, you are particularly interested in, and um, you want to explore? Um, drag and drop in uh, iPad, yeah, because I think uh, we make a lot of uh, productivity apps, so that's something we want to see how we can integrate in our existing app. Uh, AR Kit seems to be something very interesting. Um, honestly, I haven't checked it out myself, uh, but we do have some ideas, but uh, we, yeah. <laughs> We don't. We don't usually. I mean, it's like. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think ARKit. Um, ARKit. Actually, like when he was at WWDC, I, I I asked him, "Hey, I think we should make a measuring tape app out of it." And then suddenly, everyone is making measuring tape app. So, but I think it's going to be very useful. Because uh, he was shopping for his baby uh, when he was in the U.S., right? So he's buying like bulky stuff and he needed, he needed to measure like how big are those boxes? Will the airline charge him extra for it? And then he, he's, he used his iPhone to measure, but the number of iPhones around the box. So uh, I think, yeah, I think ARKit will solve the problem. I mean, as of now, we're not sure whether... We're going to continue with the idea because it seems like many people are going for it. Uh, but uh, on on my for my own project deal, right? I I thought two features were quite interesting. Like of course Siri Kit, um, because you know we have to wait for Apple to support this particular class of apps. And even for Hong Cheng, he 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 was not able to get it integrated for buses because. There's just no class of projects for bus arrival time. So that's something I think definitely I'm going to explore. And then uh, something about notifications, you can have uh, some custom tech, uh, custom input 
for your notification so i think that means uh you can do more things without going to the app i think that's good for apps in general yeah Was it, what is the next app you are working on currently? Any hint that you would like to give? What do we write for this? Hmm? What do we write for this? We, we, um, we don't usually even tell our users uh, what new features we're going to implement. So uh, I, I don't think it's right to mention what app we're going to make because sometimes apps that we make, we don't even release because uh, when, it, when it's done, we have two apps that is complete and then we realize uh, they're not good enough or we can't really market them. And yeah. I, I think we, we do have some direction about where we want to go. Um, mainly it's about uh, keeping clean shaven apps. Uh, financially sustainable for both of us to continue uh, making apps full time. So, so, so far, I mean, our approach towards app making has been uh, very, I guess, amateurish, right? Like, I, I need this app, hey, let's make it. Um, there's no market research, uh, none of those uh, um, homework done. So, I mean, Elk is a classic example where, you know, one week before we launch, I suddenly told Hongqing, hey, I think we shouldn't expect much from the app because I just realized that it's a currency converter. Even though I may tell you about it today, you're not traveling, you're, you may not be excited to download it, but even if you download it, you may not want to spend money to buy it now. And then when you finally travel, you may eventually forget about it. So. Financially, I think uh, apps like this, they, they can't bring us enough income to sustain. So we are thinking of, uh, we're trying to, now we're trying to be more business minded. Like each time we think about app, hey, can this sustain us? Uh, I mean, as much as it's fun to make things that we like, want to do, but hopefully it combines like, uh, income with it so we can continue doing it you know without thinking of oh no this is not doing well when do we still continue supporting the app when should we sunset it you know things like that yeah okay uh, so i would like to give you guys a few minutes rest why don't we go through the demonstration of elk uh, and that will give you a breather also um, I'm not sure how you want to do it. Uh, I have Elk here, but uh, this is, no, I do not have. <laughs> I, I was trying to install. Uh, okay. I do have an Elk uh, as my wallpaper, though, so uh, if you didn't notice. Was that intentional? It was. I have to download the app. Yeah, I was out downloading today, so mm. do you want to share something from your um, laptop um, and see whether that's going to work or you want to, s um, and then we need, I need to connect your phone to, uh, yeah, okay. so how do we, we're going to show the watch first, then. watch first, okay, watch um, I think I can use my iPad because it's projected. I can use uh, the camera of this iPad. Um. Okay. So I just wait. I can connect. No, he he's already connected, right? Oh. How about you do the watch? Huh? I do the phone now. Yeah. Okay. I think it's okay now. But you are already there, so. <laughs> yeah, I can so. I can so it. Do you want me to hold it? More um, I think maybe you can speak about it. I'll hold it. He's oh. speaking about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you see? Yeah, I can see. Okay, so... Just concentrate on you. Okay, so this is the app. Um, you use the gesture, you swipe left to increase number of digits. Swipe right to decrease. And then you just tap and you use this 
uh, crown to change the value. Um, we try to keep everything in one page. Uh, for something like uh, changing currency, it's not something that user will be doing often. So it's kept inside settings. Uh, so you can uh, change the currency here. Um, when, you, when you're traveling, the app will use your uh, time zone to decide what's the currency to change to. So you change to that automatically. So usually iPhone is quite good at that. Uh, once you land, uh, usually when you turn on your iPhone, it will, it will change to the right time zone. And usually that time zone, we will be able to get the currency from that. Yeah. That's it. Why don't you? Mine is not down. Interacting with the phone. Okay. Yeah. I want to show this. Oh yeah, later. So, so the iPhone app actually looks. I think you need to put it. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I can't really see my phone. <laughs> Come, take a seat. Sorry. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So, so the iPhone app actually looks very different from the watch app. Uh, but in general, I think it's quite different from currency converter apps in uh, that uh, that you see on the App Store. Many of them try to show you like convert uh, many currencies at one go, but for our purpose, right? For my purpose, it's just to make sure um, I, I find out how much this thing costs when I'm traveling. So um, it's really about the currency of the car of the country you are in back to your home currency. And um, on the iPhone, there's no way to for you to key in any numbers. Uh, that's pretty much unlike uh, currency converters out there. Also. It um, started from this idea that before I make before I made uh, this elk on the iPhone, it started from this wallpaper that I used to make for my iPhone when I travel. So, is I mean, it's my kit. Um, what I'll do is I do one to ten, and then uh, you know, since it's a wallpaper, I don't need to unlock my phone. I I just bring out my uh, phone and then I can see quickly okay this thing is maybe 500k dong so that's probably 30, 30 bucks sing dollar so a very quick way to uh, reference uh, something like a cheat sheet uh, so we carried this idea forward uh, to the phone app but we made it better such that you know I can swipe I can now uh, interact with it so it's just it's not a static list anymore and if I need to know something like how much is 550 Hong Kong dollar, I tap on it and you know I get the value. So all this just by gestures without um, any uh, numeric pad input. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so this is a question for Hong Cheng. Um, so you're part of book and you're actively involved in uh, the normal work that you kind of do at book, uh, whether it's uh, app making or being involved in different um, um, processes. Uh, how do you find time to work on these uh, apps? So uh, I meet Gigi once a week uh, on Thursday. Uh, at this place to work on uh, clean shaven apps. The rest of the week, I'll be at book. Um, I'm less involved now in the uh, client projects, um, focusing more on internal projects or uh, quick prototyping. So my timing uh, is more uh, flexible. Uh, and yeah, clean shaven apps and my next pass app, I work on them when I have time. Yeah. 
Now this is a question for JJ. Um, I'm not sure whether he mentioned while he was introducing himself. So JJ is a photographer. Uh, how much of your photography skills do you think um, goes into the app design process? Uh, is there any similarity at all? If yes, you know, what would you highlight? I think in terms of uh, technical skills, um, no, because you know you don't need to know things like ISO, shutter speed, aperture. But in terms of uh, composition, uh, I think that's helpful for the design. Um, you know, I, I my first business was a photography school. So back in uh, when I was teaching composition, we always teach our participants about what is your subject. How are you going to frame it? What is your background? So everything is about how do you make uh, what? Um, how do you make your subject stand out? So I guess it is the same in um, similar to app development. When when you want to highlight something in your app, how do you make everything? Uh, how do you employ everything that you can to make that thing stand out? To make everything simple enough, like you know, in photography we say shoot title, don't don't uh, crop title. Just show what you need um, to to get the message across. So in the same way, how do you simplify your app design such that you know it's um, simple enough, such that but but not so simple. I mean striking the right balance to convey the message that you want. Yeah. So name one personal favorite uh, Singapore based app. You both can choose one each um, and give a reason why you like it. I'll be very brief about um, so there's uh, there's an app called Service Hero. Um, it's it's not a particularly nice app, but uh, is uh, this, this, oh, this the developer here? <laughs> uh, but it's useful uh, because uh, I've been I move I move house uh, move in about a year ago and then needed a lot of services, uh, plumbing and electrician, and it it, it does what it, it advertises, so it's good. Yeah. I think my my choice will be quite surprising. Uh, I, anyone works for make bank apps here, apps for banks. No, okay, good. Because <laughs> I I think most of them, I don't know, I, I don't like most of them. But there's one bank app that's quite good. Uh, I think OCBC. But I mean, when it launched, it was really quite nice. But I don't know why they still haven't updated it to support the larger iPhone, so it's still like scaled up. But, but, but I think, like looking back, I mean, I was looking at the app again today. Some of the design choices seem quite forward thinking. Like, right? you know, they have the menu at the bottom where, you know, it actually works very well on the larger phone. Um, and then when you want to transfer money to people, there's this cute slider where. You key in the money, then you slide to confirm the sending. So I, I think uh, nice touches, but uh, I think they need to add the larger phone support. <laughs> <laughs> so when you make apps, how much you focus on making it accessible for all type of users? Uh, and most importantly, how do you test it? I think most of our accessibility focus is on uh, language now. So almost all of our apps are at least localized for five, six languages. Uh, in terms of voice over accessibility, not so much, uh, except for Elk, which uh, the recent update uh, really made it uh, very accessible. We have got uh, users who um, Visually handicapped, but the feedback that hey, you know, it's working out very well. So, yeah. So mainly right now is a uh, localization, then followed by voiceover. Yeah, testing wise, 
I mean, the usability test, that's one, one of those important tests that we do. Um, then the standard beta testing, you get bugs that you never run into. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go through uh, some of the other questions that uh, participants have. I have kind of uh, went through a lot, but let me see. Okay, the uh, one, the top one on the list is, uh, do you write tests for your apps? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should I ask why? <laughs> I know, uh, let's move on. Um, any suggestions for those developers who are not good in uh, user uh, interface design or user experience? Um, there are a lot of indie developers. Uh, how can they improve the usability of their applications? What are the things they should look into? Um, what are the tutorials or blogs you would recommend? Um, where should basically they look for inspiration? I think in terms of um User interaction is uh, a lot about uh, testing and testing your ideas, your prototypes out uh, in the real world, like what we do with our apps. I mean, you we we frequently think that hey, this is a great idea, but once you see your user using it in action, you're not going to think so anymore. And such such feedback that you gain from your testing, your usability testing is going to be worth a lot more than you know someone telling you hey this this is not uh, friendly you know you may not believe him but you have to see with your own eyes then you really know that hey this sucks you need to get rid of it uh, I think in terms of UI iOS 7 kind of made it easier for I mean I'm not a designer uh, I, I cannot I cannot design like um, nice graphics uh, so before iOS 7 you know everything is like very heavily designed you need like a lot of uh, texture and all I mean I, I can't do things like that so I think Johnny made our lives very easy right now I mean you just need to go simple uh, something that's not gaudy looking I mean I think iOS before iOS 7 a lot of apps uh, they try to go overboard on those texture things, so they end up looking quite gaudy. Uh, but if you stick with even the uh, very plain background, you just choose some nice colors, it, it will still work out in iOS. Uh, I mean, in the flatter look aesthetics of today's I iOS. But I think if you really need like... Um, if you want to go further, you should definitely think of hiring a UI proper UI designer because there's only so much like you know I can do. But um, yeah, so if if you really need that kind of help, then I think hiring someone to do it is better. Um, <clears throat> frankly, I think I'm quite bad at uh, usability. Uh, uh, I think is important to go through like to use a lot of apps uh, I think once you you figure out that oh certain apps does things better certain apps you know you just need more steps to do it so just going through apps I think it helps also making so I mean I've, I've done a lot of apps so just based on experience like and, and feedback oh this doesn't work this doesn't work so that kind of helps too yeah I think you kind of answered it earlier. Um, um, each Elk app alone can support you financially. Um, no, I think yeah, yeah. Like what JJ said, it's the kind of app that user will not think about buying the in-app purchase unless they're traveling. And when they're traveling, they may have already forgotten about the app. So even though winning the award, uh we get featured in the international media, featured in the app store, we get downloads, but uh, it may not, the conversion rate may not be high. Yeah, 
users may download because they heard about the app, but not because they need the app now. Yeah. Okay. Why is the name Elk? I think um, partly we're trying to get away from uh, having currency in the name because there's so many of them out there in the app store and if your name is something currency people are not going to find your app um, so we started to look at inspiration like you know people are saying uh, we look at strategies for naming apps so one of, one of those is uh, how do you uh, maybe you could use um, things that kind of have the same uh, characteristics of your your product so uh, I always see elk as a travel currency converter so not just a currency converter because a lot of people ask why why can't I just use xe.com I mean it is a currency converter but it is not optimized for traveling so uh, we started to look at you know hey, can we name it after animals since you know people like to name their products after animals there's this bear that won uh, the ADA also before that it was sparrow what else <laughs> <laughs> basically animals are quite nice so uh, we started uh, since it's about travel can we look for migratory animals then we just look through a list of uh, animals this sounds a like catchy short name and then one, one added bonus is that you know when you look at the elk straight on it's got these two horns there that are very symmetrical which resembles our iPhone app design so we decided to use that name yeah. I actually decided not to ask this question but since, <laughs> since this is going on top um, Gigi, are you in NS? <laughs> no, I'm not that young <laughs> What is the biggest hurdle uh, you have faced while developing apps? Maybe we come back to this. Okay. We'll come back. Do you prefer? Paid app or in-app purchase or free app with advertisement? As a user? Um, I think as a developer, this was more targeted as a developer uh, question. Uh, if it's preference, I will go for a paid app because it's, it's a simple business model, but it doesn't really work for us. Uh, so we, we want to try out uh, subscription if possible auto renewable subscription because it's um, you for, for paid app you make the app you have to continuously support the app and user just paid for once but subscription you get uh, uh, charged at interval so there's regular income but at the moment I think the mindset for the users uh, they may not be able to accept that you know they are paying subscription for a productivity app or for a currency converter so uh, that's quite hard yeah as a developer definitely pay that is much more straightforward there's no additional code no need to check receipt um, but Actually, I quite like the 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 model of that we that we've been trying out for our new apps. That means free to download, but uh, free to download and try, but in app purchase to unlock everything because uh, you know the app store doesn't offer trial. So I think this is a good balance where um, users can still try out your app and decide whether it's suitable for them uh, before they actually plunge into even though it may just be a few dollars like but I guess the mindset is th uh, that apps should be free so uh, yeah I, I guess for users yeah definitely something free is better but for developers uh, paid is more straightforward yeah I mean don't need to think of any other ways to monetize it like that yeah 
Yeah. Just now the question was the biggest hurdle for development. Yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest hurdle for us is not something technical, but it's business. Uh, it's uh, getting financially sustainable, marketing our app. That's the biggest problem we have. Let me ask this question slightly differently, but let me read out the question as it is. Um, any tips for anyone who wants to send an app to for and for the award? Uh, first of all, let me clarify: nobody sends an app for the award. They they choose the apps randomly based on uh, design and categories. They look uh, for a lot of things. Um, but I would ask this question uh, slightly differently. Any any tips you would like to give uh, to any developers who may have a better chance to win the award if they look into um, certain specific things? Actually, I think there are things that you can do to help yourself get noticed. Um, mm. Like uh, in every area, there is an Apple evangelist. Um, that means someone from working at Apple who reaches out to developers. So from time to time, he organizes like uh, technical seminars, uh, technical talks. So. It's important to, I mean, go for these events. You know, make yourself known that hey, you know, I, I'm I'm writing apps like this. I mean, his job is to help uh, help help developers. So, and his focus is on, let's say, based in Singapore, his focus will be on Singapore developers. So every area, like you know, if you are in Malaysia, Malaysia has its own. Um, so get to know your evangelist. Um, communicate with him, show him what you have been doing. So, I mean, because there's so many apps out there, you you need, Apple is not going to know about every single one of them just because you submit them to the App Store. So, um, getting them to notice your app and bring it up to their peers in Apple is a good start, I think. So, uh, that's, that's my advice, I think. I think there's an official channel for this. Uh, if you refer to the WWDC session from, I think, last year or the year before uh, on uh, App Store, they met, there was an email address. So you can write to that email and tell them, you know, you made this app, what's the app about, and uh, just try and sell it to them. Another thing is uh, localization is big for them. You, you want to get featured. Uh, you have to localize in uh, some of the popular languages in the in the big markets. Yeah. I'm going to pick only two more questions, then we'll move to uh, the other part of the um, session. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, this is interesting. Do you use Storyboard or uh, do you create your UI programmatically? You're going to start a war here, you know. <laughs> Actually, Hongqing is the one who likes to do things programmatically. Uh, I started using Storyboard like um, about a year or so ago, and I tried to get him on board. He's very frustrated with it, but he's getting there. He's getting there. So <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I I think there's. There are benefits to storyboard, but you know sometimes when you run into some hurdles, it's so frustrating. You know you can code it in like a few minutes and solve the problem. So yeah, anything about that? I was uh, completely into writing everything programmatically until early this year. Uh, this early this year, I tried to do everything in storyboard. Unless it's a fancy UI that requires a lot of animation, yeah. <laughs> is there anything that has changed uh, after getting the award? And this is my last question for uh, today. Any other questions that you might have, um, you can ask after the session. But I have a few more things that I want to go um, after this. Um, so any changes that has happened uh, for for you guys after you got the ADA? Um, no, no changes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. 
let me put it differently haven't anyone from um, like we were jokingly telling uh, to david who is the evangelist that uh, they should put a photo of both of you in the orchard uh, apple store holding the cube um, which tells me that where is the cube we would like to see it everybody would like to see it yeah uh, can you bring the cube You want to talk about your experience with this cube? <laughs> uh, so they, I asked them to ship it over to Singapore because I was quite worried. Uh, it's very heavy, and uh, I'm not sure whether I can tell the custom. Uh, it's it's just a trophy, <laughs> and I'm worried that they'll yeah they'll confiscate it. So I asked Apple, and they said that uh, for the past few years they ship it to uh, winners over overseas. So I asked them to do that. Uh, it came a month late, uh, and they initially I thought the whole thing is a uh, fully uh, battery because it's very heavy, but it's actually just four triple A batteries. Uh, because then they ship it there to remove the battery, so they include the Allen key for me. So I just yeah, when they got here, I just put the battery in. Yeah. Are you sure you they? Sip the original one to you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, we will go through some of the photos that uh, JJ um, has. Uh, but before that, I have uh, two announcements that I would like to uh, make. Um, first of all, I wanted to announce about the conference uh, before the event today. Um, but um, there are some logistical issues and we, we haven't announced it yet. Um, but you can purchase uh, super early bird tickets uh, starting from this weekend. Um, the conference is on 19th and 20th of October at the same venue as last year. Uh, that's uh, um, We have a really interesting list of speakers for this year. Um, um, and again, uh, we'll just check our website uh, when we announce. The second thing is. Um, uh, so this is finally happening, Realm uh, Singapore World Tour. Um, so Realm, uh, actually they, they travel around the world um, uh, hosting these events. Um, one of the Realm engineer, he came to iOS Conf last year um, and he spoke uh, at the conference. I happened to meet him um, the day before uh, WWDC uh, on, on, on Sunday. And then uh, I was asking him jokingly, hey, why don't you do an event in Singapore? Like, why don't you guys come to Singapore? And they said, like, oh, I do not know who to contact. And I was like, dude, you are talking to me. And then he said, <laughs> you do not know who to contact. So uh, finally, um, it hap it's happening. Um, and it's a free event. And it is going to be at this venue um, because it's easier for me to host here. Um, the date is 21st of August, um, and um, it's an evening event. Um, you can just go to realm.io uh, world tour. Anybody who hasn't used Realm before, just uh, for the sake of information, Realm is very popular um, mobile database. You can use it for um, iOS, Android, and uh, all sort of other platforms. Um, it is actually more popular than Core Data and SQLite uh, um, as of today. Um, and uh, but they are not really known for their uh, database. I mean, the database is really cool. They are actually known for the videos that they put uh, uh, on their site as the tutorial videos. Uh, to a point that people joke about uh, Realm is actually a video tutorial site, but they also have a database. Uh, um, but yeah, jokes apart, they are coming to Singapore. They will say uh, a lot about their uh, mobile platform, um, and it's going to be exciting. Um, I think that's all from me, but now you'll like to see some photos that Jeje uh, would like to see. Oh. 
you have anything? Okay, I think, uh, okay. So it's not really photo, but JJ would like to give away his uh, WWDC pins that they got uh, um, from Apple. Um, they were quite popular at WWDC. Um, and um, to a point that people were hunting these pins like uh, Pokemon Go. Um, so if you haven't got a chance to get one of these pins, then come forward and, and take your pin. Um, that's the end of the event, folks. Uh, is there any other announcement anyone, anyone would like to uh, make? Uh, any any final words from you guys? No, not good. Uh, if not, then um, thanks, Han Cheng and JJ, for um, coming and speaking to us. Um, the reason we had this event and we kind of um, conducted this is because uh, this is an inspiring story for all of us uh, as an app developer that um, uh, like somebody from Singapore has won this award and then um, it's basically it makes us feel proud and, and uh, kind of uh, we wanted to learn something from you guys. Thank you for sharing. So that's the end of the event. You can still 